Hey there folks, Dark Phoenix here, and let's play some more Witcher 2. We are just about to reach where my quest marker says the Immortelle is. So let's get to it, and let's also drop a Quen, because I am very, very paranoid that something will jump me. Stay close to me. What the hell is that thing? kind of makes sense if there was. But who really knows? And you guys are in the damn way. Let's stop that. Collapse tunnel. Oh yeah. 
get the fuck out of my way, please? Thank you so much. We collapsed the tunnels. And are now on our way out. With very limited light sources, because I don't want to waste a potion. And fortunately for me, we can just straight up return to the surface. No need to wait. Right, get out. Looks like it's all over. Thanks for your help, Sultan. Yeah. Say nothing over. It's handy. Enough yapping. Time for some vodka. First, I want to see if my fuck date's still waiting. Just don't strain yourself. It takes energy to drink with us too, you know. Okay, then. And now we have to talk to Philippa because of reasons. So let's get on that. Also, if we can, we should probably turn over the potion ingredient so Geralt doesn't accidentally use it in the potion or something. Mm. We've done that before. Um, oh, it's just a massage. <laughs> I think Geralt figured there was some sex going on in here. <laughs> Disappointed, Geralt, <laughs> that you can't get in on the action because what is of being it, with Triss. Who was that girl? Cynthia, a leashed sorceress. Hmm. A charming expression. Do you also use muzzles? Leash <laughs> means a connection between a sorceress and her assistant. An unfortunate term, I admit, but it explains how things are. Cynthia can tap oh. my power, use my spells. She's a conduit, and she's learning along the way. It's convenient, and except for the name, not derisive at all. But you're not here hmm. to talk about Cynthia. Nope. Immortel. If you'd like to take it off my hands, I've got some here. I found an Immortel. Excellent. Yes. Now... Magical danger. It is time for us to chat with Philippa here. You wanted to discuss something. You said I needed to find a magic artifact. You said we'd need a magical object to cure Saskia. Mm -hmm. Any ideas? Yes, yeah, some start tips might help. Magical items do not grow on trees, as you know. <laughs> Luckily, this would be area lucky has for a us if it history. did, but unfortunately, the we're not the so site lucky. The of Sabrina Glevisig's death and suffering. The abandoned mines. I was hoping you'd be specific. I won't ask you to traipse around with a divining rod, but please try to be a little inventive. Ask the locals, that's always a good place to start. Right. I dare say oh, Alderman Burden knows every last stone in the area. Yeah, Maybe I don't know what it is, but I do not like her very much. Not you in the slightest. Yeah. yeah. Who exactly is Letho? I don't suppose you know anything about that. Have you heard about a witcher's school? Apparently the viper's their sign. No. Why do you ask? The Kingslayer wears a medallion adorned with a viper. Pretentious and childish for my taste. He can't be very smart. <clears throat> well, I would tend to disagree, seeing as he's managed to kill multiple kings and is still alive and managed to cross Yorveth and not end up dead. So that would tend to imply he is quite smart. I would have to disagree, but the wild hunt. I want to ask A about them. Like you ought to know bundles about the wild hunt. A sorceress's knowledge has nothing to do with superstitions. The hunt's not a superstition. True. The phenomenon seems to exist. Mm. I want to know everything there is to know about it. It's strictly atmospheric. It doesn't interest me. Just as whirlwinds, whirlpools, and snowfalls do not interest me. Seriously? <clears throat> you don't care about a bunch of elves from an alternate dimension that are kidnapping people. Really? Really? Wow. You need to get your priorities in order, lady. At the council, you mentioned artifacts were needed to undo the curse. Hmm. But I can't look for them now. I can do that. 
Why? I have my reasons. Tell me something. What happened here three years ago? I'm not entirely sure what this is about, but it has been a while since what I recorded, so I may ago? have forgotten something. Hensult attacked Edurn, but met his match. Nobody won that war. Sabrina Glefisig got into a conflict with the Commander-in-Chief of the Kedweni forces, and this led to both armies being routed. Fireballs turned the battlefield into a flaming tomb. Henselt accused Sabrina of using a forbidden weapon. Oh, right. The reason Henselt doesn't I think so. especially I like I suspect mages. the curse got out of hand because of the circumstances. That would explain it. Circumstances? The stars weren't right, wrong phase of the moon. There's always an excuse for simple bungling. She placed the curse while burning at the stake. Her hands and feet nailed to a wagon wheel. I'd say she did a good job Ouch. considering. Wow. That's a little extreme, I have to admit. A little extreme. But yeah, under the circumstances, I'd say cursing the guy is a perfectly reasonable response. Heck, I'm surprised she didn't... didn't burn his testes off or something. That would be around the level of vindictiveness you might expect. But let's move on to the next subject. Do you happen to know anything about, know blood, anything curses? about blood curses? Do you? We're dealing with a fourth level curse, also known as the Curse of the Archmistress. Well, well. I'm impressed. Thing is, until now I thought it was only a myth, that such a curse couldn't be cast. You thought wrong. There are six confirmed cases of this curse being inflicted. What about confirmed cases of it being lifted? One. Achieved by a team of sorcerers led by Archmistress Francesca Finderbear, hence the curse's other name. Sabrina Glevesig was on the team. Small world. That's not all. The curse investigated by Francesca and Sabrina was designed to end the Tyson dynasty, the rulers of Kovir. They were cursed by Scarlet Rodelega, a complete madman, but very talented. An eclipse and wraiths also accompanied his curse. So Sabrina's curse is just a knockoff Rodelega. Exactly. Huh. That's interesting. Well, if this curse has been used before, maybe we can do something with that information and use a similar method or something? Can Francesca's experience help us? Certainly. I know the symbols and the workings of the curse thanks to her. Care to explain? I'm the one risking my neck. You'll have to relive the battle and change its course at the right moment. I don't know exactly what will happen. Nobody does. I'll look for those artifacts. Okay, but one other thing. Did you happen to notice something? Not all of the ghosts were so violently aggressive. That's interesting, don't you think? Did you notice? Not all the ghosts were aggressive. Yes. Most just disappeared when they touched the aura of a living person. I think the curse corrupts the ghosts of the fallen and turns them into draugers. Is that the witch's professional name for wraiths? Draugers are demons of war. They arise at sites of exceptionally vicious, bloody battles. Their bloodlust and hatred in condensed form. Can you kill them by conventional means? A silver sword is enough for a draugr. But as long as the curse remains active, new ones will arise. The soldier's ghosts are the key. If I could turn the tide of the battle... For that, you'll need symbols of war belonging to those who fell in battle. Ah. Hatred, and now death, we're getting courage, to the and heart of it. All artifacts must be magically active and connected to the fallen, or they won't lure the ghosts. Right. I'll look around. Okay, then. Finding two will be enough. Get the symbols of hatred and death and leave the rest to me. Hatred I and death. courage and faith. Don't fuss. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> hatred Cecil and seems death. Cecil know a lot about the area. We always get the best jobs, don't we? I'm good for now. I'll let you know when I learn something. Hatred and death. Why does it have to be hatred and death? <sighs> Why not something more cheerful? Well, I suppose asking for something cheerful would be asking too much here, now wouldn't it? Mm, 
Cecil Burden. We need to talk to that guy and get rewards for a couple of things now, so that's going to be our next point of call. Get rewarded for our hard work in killing these monsters. Provided I can find out how to get to him, of course. We'll see how tricky that ends up being. It's all relative, after all. Ah, here he is. That was easy. The necrophage nest. We killed most of the necrophages. Most? The passage to the lower level collapsed. They won't get out. In time, they'll die off and you can restart work. Thank you, Witcher. The whole of Vergen thanks you. Here's your coin. Shive, Skags, and Zigrim will get the same. Great, but now we have to talk to you about a few other things. <clears throat> Do you happen to know anyone who took part in the battle three years ago? Cecil, do you know anyone who fought in the war three years ago? I did. Did you fight here at Vergen? Of course. Philippa claims you know a bit about the battle. That old kook insult, called king by some. Thought that Adernians were bumpkins who'd ship bricks as soon as his troops yeah, crossed the river. Yeah, sounds like that Why bastard. Did he According to Hensult, Upper Edern is the ancient legacy of the Kedwini crown and must be returned to the mother country. Brazen Farter. Yeah. <clears throat> that brazen Farter had a point. If you read some history, you'll know that 300 years ago this land belonged to Kedwin. Lord of Crab. <laughs> 700 years ago the elves reigned here. And a million years ago, these lands were the domain of the worms. If things weren't that way, every <laughs> king could invade a neighboring land and claim his right to do so because an ancestor took a dump there. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. Ansel wanted to conquer Upper yeah, Earth. What then? Not he rolled in, got hammered, and rolled out. Cecil, that doesn't help me much. It wasn't a battle. It was a slaughter. If I try speaking of it, I'll see it all again. I don't want... The ghosts of the fallen fight in the mist. They turn into horrible creatures called Draugrs. Adernians, Kedweni, men, elves, and dwarves too. Bloody hell. No peace even after death. I want to help them, but I need to know more about the battle. Very well. Listen. A beautiful day that grew hot later. Very hot. When Vandergrift attacked in the afternoon, he sent the Dun Banner at the fore. Many of our lads shit themselves at the mere sight of their standard, but we had a surprise of our own. Under the cover of night, we prepared fire pits. Our archers lit them up at the right moment. I still can't believe we managed to fool their scouts. If it wasn't for that ambush, we wouldn't be speaking today. They likely wouldn't be in Upper Edern at all. We decimated the Dunbanner, but that was only the beginning. Seltkirk was our commander. Everywhere he appeared, the Kidwenis gave ground. He wreaked havoc among them. Hearts rose at the mere sight of his armor. Then, Vandergrift himself entered the fray. Seltkirk met him in the middle of the field. In the end, Vandergrift killed Seltkirk. A terrible death that sent the Adernian ranks into disarray. I thought it was the end of us. Then the sky fell. As if the stars themselves had decided to avenge the death wait, of a wait, great wait. knight. The sky Fire fell? Fire covered the battlefield. Nobody what sought the, the enemy. They were all looking for somewhere to flee. Yes. There were no more friends and enemies. Only the living and the dead. They say it was the doing of a Kidwini sorceress who wanted revenge on Vandergrift. Could be true, as Henseld had her executed right after the battle. Right. Her. <clears throat> okay. What happened to the Dun Banner? You captured the Dun Banner standard? Hensult's choice troops, and not a one survived. The visitor sent them to their deaths. Refused to give them reinforcements. He was a monster in human form. The men of the Dun were real swaggerers. Killed a lot of our lads, but for every Dunner, there were seven Adernians. They had no chance. Aye, we captured their standard. We buried what was left of them in the crypts beyond Vergen. Their standard lies with them. Worthy foes are to be respected, even in death. Yeah, I kind of like that, that standard. sentiment. I kind of like that sentiment, actually. 
it's kind of nice. And sorry for the beeping. That was my timer. And I'm going to keep going until we finish this conversation, even though that'll put me over the episode length I'm trying to go for. Did you see the duel between Selkirk and Vandergrift? I stood half a furlong from them. Never seen a fight like it. Probably never will again. They'd already met once at a jousting tournament in Ard Craig. Selkirk won there. He beat on the visitor so hard he broke his sword. Selkirk was a true knight, the last of his breed. Vandergrift was so pissed off after that tournament he hanged the smith who made his sword and ordered a special one from a sorcerer. I bet he cut down Selkirk with that new sword. Vandergrift is dead. What happened to his sword? Sarskir's got it. Good thing, too. Only her hand can tame the hatred enchanted in that sword. After the battle, when the flames abated, the scavengers came. They stole everything. Imagine. Not a single keepsake or Selkirk in the whole of Edom. His brother babbles something about a gauntlet. He's a lying dog. Okay. A sword and a banner. That's interesting. Uh, how did the battle start? Remember anything from before the battle? As if it was yesterday. Hensel's troops crossed the Pontar the third day after the autumn equinox. Edon had good spies, so we were ready for them. And Selkirk lined up our troops along the hills. Our hearts rose at the sight of the banners of Wengerberg, Aldersburg, and Gullet fluttering in the wind. Knights and armored infantry side by side in our ranks. Even the peasants had their regiments. The dwarves were on the left flank. Over 5,000 strong we were. Nobody caring about race or background like never before. Only King Demavend was missing. But he must have had more important business than defending his country. Yeah, he sounds like a shit king. I have to say that. He really does. <sighs> Anyways, later, Cecil. I know what I gotta go for Thanks, now. Thanks, Cecil. That was helpful. I think I know what I need to lift the curse now. Madam Eilhart claims you need four symbols. The standard symbolizes death. Vandegrift's sword stands for hatred. What about the other two? I have mm. a feeling Philippa has a handle on the rest. Here's hoping you're right. Yeah, if not, we'll have to punch her really hard. In any case... I'm going to cut this episode here. This is this has been Dark Phoenix Gaming, and you've been watching The Witcher 2. If you've enjoyed this, then please share this video, follow me on my social media, and subscribe to keep updated on my latest episodes. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. See you then, folks. See you then.